Hi, my name is Leah Myers of Myers Design Studio, and today we're going to be using the Kemore 605. This was previously owned by a lady named Yoshiko, and she was married to a Marine in, in Hawaii. And she sewed all of her children's clothes with this machine. And you can really tell it, it, it sews beautifully and the zigzag works great. Um, everything like that is, it works just fine. So Yoshiko, I'm just going to tell you this story and then I'll get to the quilt. Uh, because sometimes, you know, vintage machines have stories, right? They're not just, uh, they're like a member of the family, you know, or somebody's family. And this was Yoshi Yoshiko's family. She's married to Marine, lived in Hawaii, and her daughter inherited this after she passed away. Well, her daughter tried to, um, I don't know, either sell it or give it to a, or not give, but anyway, to a, um, a sewing machine place. And they said that it was only good for parts and that they would take it, you know? And so the daughter put it on Craig, Craigslist instead. And my sister, who provides me with all these beautiful machines, by the way, um, my sister took it and all she did was clean it and give it a service. And it sews beautifully. So if you have a vintage machine and a sewing machine shop, shop blah, it's a mouthful, sewing machine shop tells you that it's no longer serviceable, that may not always be true. So you might get a second opinion or a third opinion or however many opinions you need. But I'm really grateful that Yoshiko's daughter so, uh, sold this to my sister because I really, really love it. And she's super heavy um she's a early zigzag machine they had cams on the inside right here they look like little plastic gears with designs on the outside so that they do decorative stitches and um really fabulous machine so if you have one and you're not using a kenmore 605 get it service get somebody to service it or pass it on like yoshiko's daughter did to someone like my sister who appreciates vintage uh, machines now back to our project finally right sorry <laughs> i just love vintage machines and i promote keeping them in in the family or you know passing them on anyway so today we're going to be doing again the half square triangle and i designed this project and i'm getting a half square triangle right now i designed this project to be made all with half square triangles so i'm sticking with the beginner quilting so that people can like gradually learn but i'm going to do a lot of beginning quilting videos at first so that we can gradually learn or you know our skills get bigger or bigger get better <laughs> i'm tongue-tied today sorry but half square triangles are wonderful you can make a lot of different designs with these um it is it doesn't take a you know it just takes a little bit of skill to learn it but the best way to learn it at first is to make it bigger and cut it down cut it down to the size you want but anyway today we're going to do snowstorm and we're going to start with um how to you know make the line down and square it up and up and i'll see you there on the next segment okay so i'm going to start constructing the half square triangles and what i do is i put my ruler point to point down here and then I draw a line in the middle like that. And then I take the two pieces. I'm just demonstrating this. I don't have another piece down here, but just demonstrating this. And then I sew a, a scant quarter inch on either side of this, these two, right? Uh, uh, either side of this line, sorry. On either side, a scant quarter of an inch means a little bit less than a quarter of an inch for people who are new. Anyway, so after I've sewn them, I, I uh, cut them. Let me, yeah, I cut these. Well, let me flatten this a little bit because I've already ironed this. Hold on a second. Iron this. Kind of taking you a tour here. <laughs> Sorry. The, my camera was too far away and I've got to hold it with one hand so I can, you know, do this one handed anyway. 
So I take this and now I want to square it up. And I've already squared this, but I'm going to show you how I did it and it and you can see it really clearly. So here is I use the Tucker Trimmer uh, Studio 180. Uh, this is the one I have. There's a lot of different ones. And there's a, a you know one through four side on this side, and this one has half sizes. And I want to use the half sizes on that side. And I'm making a four and a half inch half square triangle. Right? So I put it on the stitch line. Right there on the stitch line. See? And I want to square this up to four and a half inches like that. See? It's four and a half inches. And then I take a rotary cutter. Let me grab it. A rotary cutter and I cut one side and then the other. And to make this easy, you can use a rotating mat of your choice. I have a Fiskars, an old one that's square that I use. And that's how I get all of my pieces squared. So I have, after I've trimmed them all up and I've, you know, done that part, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, iron them. And I'll show you how I iron them. But I iron some, some of them in this direction. And I iron some of them in the opposite direction. Because sometimes you'll have a, you'll have a triangle like this. And you'll need to put them together. So if you do, and you've already prepared your pieces this way, your, your seams, doing this one-handed, your seams will nest. And you've already done the ironing. You don't have to go back and iron another seam in a different direction. So that's just a time saver. So iron some in one direction, some in the other. On some pieces, when the the like the triangles are pointing up like that, it's not going to matter because you're not matching seams here. That's not going to matter. But anyway, this is how I do my half square triangles. You make two at a time. And um, the way I iron these, I'll do this one again. Well, I'll, I'll iron the one that I back to camera. Sorry. Doing this one hand. So I lay it flat. Can set the seam. Okay. And then I take my, and I just roll it back. And I use the edge of my iron like that. And I get it really flat. Okay, and I, I didn't use any steam. Well, actually, I used a, some steam upstairs. I did all these upstairs. And, um, and I steamed these real well and got them really flat so that I have a whole bunch prepared. Anyway, I hope that makes this e uh, process easy and we'll start constructing the strips. And I'll show, my, show you my two-by-two two method with my chart, and uh, I'll see you there. So now we're going to start constructing this quilt. And what I do is I have the pattern here and I'm on my last row, right? So I just lay my pattern down and I put a piece of paper over what I've already done. And I'm on my last row right here, okay? And uh, you see that, let me put it down a little further. There we go. I have already laid out these two, these two, and I do it two by two by two. So now I'm on this one where the triangle's going down and then a triangle's going up. So I'm going to grab two blocks here. So I need the triangle going down like that. And then I need another one going the other way. Like that. So once I have this laid out, so that one's going down and that one's going up, I take my highlighter and I, I mark those off that I've done them. And then I take these two and I pin them and I sew them right away. 
and I will be right back and we'll sew these two together. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to sew, and if you notice, I have the needle not in the center, but to the left, because I measured that this is a, a true quarter of an inch over here. If I put the needle in the center, let's see if I can do that. If I put the needle in the center, it's too far, and if it's on the far left, it's too far. So I have it all the way to the right, and there is the little uh, needle controller right here, right there. Whoops. <laughs> Got to pull it down a little bit. Anyway, so I have it all the way to the right and I have my stitch. It's right here at two and a half, right? It's in between the two and the three. And it's a cute little dial, has a cute little dial right there. Little Kenmore. And there's the, um, where the uh, uh, feed dogs go up and down and there's the button holder or the button button holder bobbin oh gosh and it's cute when you get put the bobbin in you just push this down it's really neat it's a cute little machine i read I, i'm gonna sew this first i can't do two things at once I'm always trying to anyway so go ahead and sew and i've got this i've got a little dog ear poking out here so don't worry about that anyway i sew these guys in half or uh, together in a row and i just go through the grid and mark off mark off each one of these these squares and i well i for demonstration purposes i just pinned them but i normally just go right to my machine and sew them as i mark them off on the uh on the sheet anyway i'm gonna get i'm gonna finish all this row do the two by two method and keep marking off my um you know my my sections and then i'll be right back and we'll finish this up okay so now i've sewn these two by two by two on the sewing machine and they're all on my machine chain pieced and ready to go so i take the very last two off this is the way i do it you can do it the other other direction if you want but i just do it from the last thing i've sewn so i have these two on the end they should match they should match the last two right here on the on the thing because we're going in a reverse order that way so for me it was just easier to do that so i have these two blocks the triangles going up and these two blocks the triangles going up so i see that that they're right and i mark them off i'm going to use my pencil this time and i'll just draw a line through all four of those Where are my pencil lid? anyway i'll draw a line through all four of those eventually if i could get my pencil lead to advance there we go draw a line through all all four of those really well so i know that i've done all four two four i kind of went over a little just a little okay that's why i'm using a pencil so i don't mark off the wrong wrong ones anyway so i have those um already laid out and then what i do is i just go ahead and sew it two by two by two because if I found if I laid this whole thing out, and this might work for you to, um, to do, but it didn't work for me. If I laid the whole row out in front of me, in between uh, having it on my table and over to the machine, I would switch the, you know, switch the pieces around and I would make mistakes. So this way I didn't make it as many mistakes. Sometimes I will. I mean, you know, it happens. So I just, you know, ripped out the seam. It's fine you know, that we're, we're sewing and it, things happen. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sew these two together. These are the two sets of two. Okay. So these two together, and then I'll show you the next one. Cause that first step's pretty easy. You just pick up two at a time. So those two at a time. Okay. Now leave that on the machine. Take the next last set of two 
is four in total. Okay, and I'll show you the close-up of that row that I'm doing. I'm going to fold this down. Why don't I just fold it down? And I'll, I'll show you a close-up on the camera so it's easier to see what I'm doing here. Okay, now that top row, say I've marked off these four with a pencil, I've done those. So now I'm doing the next four right here. Okay. So folding it might, might work better than a piece of paper. That way you're not, you absolutely can't see the next row up there. The paper moves. Okay. So now these, these four should match that. So two triangles are going up, one going up, one's going down. And lo and behold, they match. So I just sew the next two. And don't iron yet. Leave the ironing for last. Do not iron uh, just yet. Because, uh, and I'll show you. Because I, I iron one way and then iron the other way at the end. Okay, now these are the last, la this last bit. These are the last two I sew. I have sewn. <laughs> oh, and I didn't mark those four off, so let's do that. So there's two, three, four. I've done those. Mark them off. See? I've marked those off. Okay? Okay, I might have done that too fast. Sorry. And I marked those off that I've done them. Okay? So now these should match. Okay, so now I have a triangle going down, down, and two going up. So I have two going up here. Uh-oh. Okay. Wait. Okay, yes. Okay, perfect. I'm not wrong. I'm just not looking. See, I didn't mark it off right. I didn't mark it off well enough. I need to make these blue squares a little lighter so when you guys get this, you can see this. So <laughs> the triangle's going down here. Yes. Uh, that one's going up. These two are going up. And that's perfect. Yep. I didn't make a mistake. Just, you know, when you're sewing, you've got, um, you know, you just make a method on a system that that will work for you. And, and this one, the two by two method seemed to work really easy for me. Uh, so I didn't get confused because with, with patterns, sometimes I'll, you know, um, lose my place and I need to make it as easy as I can. So I've done the last four. I'm going to mark these off well, scribble, so I don't, my eyes don't wander to a different place. Okay, and this is my last piece, and I'm going to put it on the end over here right now. Put it on the end in the right way and sew it together. Okay, do that quickly. Sorry, I got confused a minute ago. <laughs> I... I'm not perfect and I'm trying to hurry, you know. Well, you know, I told you, I told, tell you guys not to hurry. But when I'm filming, you know, sometimes I do. I apologize. I'll try to remember. So, anyway, I sew these guys together and we're almost done with this whole row. And then I'll show you how I, how I, iron them and it's pretty simple pretty simple okay <laughs> uh, it and, and okay so now we're gonna so these are the last two and they're on the other side the, this is on one end this is on one side and these are on this other side so I'm gonna put these together before I attach these two together so which one is this one Okay, this one's the one on the very end. I can see it on my chart. It's really the pattern, but I'm using it as the chart. And then this one's on this end, and I put these together. Yep. And I don't have to mark this because this is the very last bit. Because the pieces are so big. And if you've gotten them all right in the rows that you're supposed to, you don't have to worry about 
you don't have to worry about me messing it. It's at the beginning stages when you're putting the two pieces together each time. I found that I was like reversing them or so the two by two method is really good. And it, and it works real well. Okay. So now see how long this has gotten. Now I know. All right. And I'll, even at this point, I probably, probably uh, mess this up. So I have to look at my chart still. Okay. So now it's attaching right here in the middle, right, right there in the middle. So right where my finger is, that's where my seam's going to go. And I see that I have that triangle. So I'm going to sew these together. That blue triangle going down, which is fine, right? And this is how you start this, this quilt. So I designed this uh, quilt to be a, a fat quarter quilt so that you could use your fat quarters in your stash. Um, cause I have, I have a lot of fat, fat quarters cause I like, I like fabric and sometimes I like it so much that I want to have the whole line of fabric, you know? So the way I, the way I iron these, and I'll just tell you, I iron all the seams like there's these, I've got my two sets here, which is what we'll do next time. Uh, oh, here, I got one. Yeah. So let me. Let me just pick this up and this is how I iron them. I don't need to demonstrate. So I ironed this, this top row. I ironed it to the, that side to the left or whatever up or down, or I could just show you this way. <laughs> Eventually I'll get there. So I ironed one row to the left. And then I iron one row to the right and it's not laying down very well, but so that when I get to the seam, it'll nest. So as you do this row, so this row, I would iron, I would iron that way. And then the next row I iron the other way so that all of them will nest. Anyway, so you can um, go ahead and start if you wish, constructing these um, half square triangles, and um, and I will start putting these together in the next episode. Okay, so now we have just the first strip done. Next, in the next episode, we're gonna do we're gonna put two of these together, and I'll show you how I pin them. I know I'm flopping this around. How how I pin them, put them together, and then. After that episode, you can start, you know, creating the whole quilt yourself. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you very much for being here with me. Please like and subscribe. I appreciate you being here so much. And um, I look forward to seeing you on the next, next episode. <laughs> Bye.